Yeah, it's going to be a completely different game, like you said, completely different cup of tea. Pakistan, uh, you have to say that, you know, at the start of the game, we would have been uh, classified as favourites and we would have expected to win this game. Uh, the only point is that their traditional rivals, arch rivals, are neighbours and there's always an extra edge to that game. But in terms of a cricketing contest, this game between India and South Africa will be far tighter, far closer. Uh, South Africa, like you said, one of the three favourites to win the tournament. They have have an excellent, excellent one-day unit. And, you know, they've been in a good run of form as well. So, it's not going to be easy for India. Plus, you know, we keep on harping about India's record against Pakistan and how good it is. As good our record against Pakistan is, that's how bad our record against South Africa is in the World Cup. Never beaten them. I'd, I'd wait to pass judgement. I mean, yes, they did really well against Pakistan. Mohamed Shami picked up four, but crucial wickets were picked up by Umesh Yadav, uh, Ashwin. So, look, I'd still wait. But but the key, again, would be India's batting. I mean, in this World Cup, if India really need to you know progress uh, far, it's going to depend a lot on their batting. And their batting showed really good signs. I mean, Virat Kohli got to 102nd gear. I don't think he really exerted himself. It seemed like he was batting in second gear, and yet he got a 100. Uh, Suresh Rana coming into form. Shikhar Dhawan getting a 70. These are good signs. I mean, with Rohit Sharma, we know he got a 150 in the warm-up game and he's always that kind of batsman who on his day will tear apart any bowling attack. So, all in all, good signs as far as the batting lineups are concerned and that's what gives you a little bit of hope going into this game against South Africa that if India's batting clicks, uh, we will put up a good show. Well, Dale Stain, I mean, forget Melbourne. I think any surface, any pitch, any ground, Dale Stain, he's the premier fast bowler in the world, the number one bowler in my eyes. Uh, fast bowler in the world. So, he'd be a threat. He'd be the number one threat no matter what the surface is. But, uh, look, I mean, their, their bowling attack with Mone Morkel, you know, with his height, with his pace, Philander, it's a varied bowling attack. And then you've got Imran Tahir bowling. So, look, uh, it's a varied bowling attack and that's what gives uh, South Africa's bowling attack the edge. Uh, I My feeling is, I mean, if you had to do a comparison between the two teams, as, as a team unit, South Africa at the moment are a better team unit than us in, in terms of, you know, the batting that they possess and the bowling that they possess. In India, in our team, uh, it's uh, the old cases. But the difference between the Indian batting and the South African South African batting isn't that that vast. But the difference between the South African bowling and the Indian bowling is, is quite big. So, it's going to come down to which one of our match winners on the day can produce a magical innings and uh, help us uh, get the victory that we want. You're right. We've struggled against spinners and uh, that's a bit of a surprise because who would have thought Indians struggling against spinners? But, you know, Mohin Ali picked up wickets against us in the Test Series. Uh, he's done well against the Indians whenever he's played. So, I mean, Imran Tahir, he could be, he could be a, a secret weapon as far as South Africa are concerned. But yet, I, I still feel that it will still be the three fast bowlers that they have, which will be South Africa's strength. Imran Tahir, he's, he's done really well for South Africa. He's become an important cog in their bowling attack. And uh, again, it's, it, uh, Shawa, it's going to boil down to how our match winners uh, produce on that day. Someone like Virat Kohli, he's come back into form. He's got 100 in the first game that he's played in the World Cup. Suresh Shrena, Shikhar Dhawan, Mahendra Singh Dhoni. These are experienced, experienced campaigners with a lot of quality in them. So, not only do they have experience, they've got capability. Now, you've just got to marry their experience and capability on the day. And hopefully, we'll come good. But as far as South Africa's bowling is concerned, like I said, the three fast bowlers, Imran Tahir, uh, a lot will depend on these four. And how India attacks Imran Tahir. I mean, are they going to look at him and say, look, you know what, this is, he's the weak link. Let's target him for runs. Let's try and get 60, 70 of his 10 overs. If they do that, uh, they could put a bit of pressure on Imran Tahir. And, uh, you know, uh, under pressure, we've seen the best of them crumble. You've got to start with a 300-plus approach. If you lose an early wicket, and that's when you alter your plans. I mean, then you say, listen, you know what, let's get to 260 and 270 and then try and get a few more towards the end of the innings. But look, having said that, the way, uh, you know, Zimbabwe played against... Uh, uh, South Africa. I'm not sure. Ours is a much better batting lineup, and the way Hamilton Mazakadza batted, you know, stepping out to Dale Stain, hitting him over long off for sixes. Uh, so look, you know, that should give the Indian batsmen confidence, saying like, listen, you know what? If Zimbabwe can get to <coughs> the score that they did, uh, we surely can. Uh, but again, it's a matter of you know getting off to a good start, uh, making sure that we don't lose early wickets, because what the T20 game has done is that it made sure that in the last 15 overs of any game, a short version game, if you got wickets in hand, 
getting about 9 or 10 runs and over is par for course. I mean, you can easily get 130, 140, 150 the last 10. <clears throat> in the last 15, I beg your pardon. So, look, as long as you have wickets in hand, we will get that big score. The key is not to lose early wickets. 